Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Twisted Strands, episode 162. I'm really sure this time it is 162. And my name is Jeannie, but you could call me Jenny or vice versa. I respond to both. And just want to say sorry for not recording last week, but I was in the dumps, like, so in the dumps that I'm still in the dumps and sometimes I'm just not fit for public consumption or I don't want to get out of bed or leave the house or whatever. Not sure what that has to do with doing a podcast, but hey, there you go. It happens to the best of us. Also happens to the worst of it, hence my situation. So anyway, I have been knitting and finished my weaving project, but I haven't started a new one, and I brought up the last finished object that I talked about, but I didn't bring up. So why not start with, actually, you know what, let me just start with something that resonated with me that my, uh, yeah, I know, my pastor said, he repeated something that Mother Teresa said not Catholic, not the best of Christians, or maybe a decent, just a decent person, I try. But anyway, what she said was, not everybody is destined to do great things, but you can do things with great love. So, if you're a bit like me and you're not exactly Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or Einstein, maybe we can just do great things with great love, even the smallest things, from making dinner to knitting a hat or even knitting things for charity. We can do things with great love, and that's the message I wanted you to take away from this week. And that's that. So let me show you my two finished objects. One is a small adult's hat that I knit for charity out of donated yarn. And I've washed it and I let it air dry because when I did a test on it, yeah that doesn't look like it's been washed does it? It has I swear. Washed and dried and ready to go. But yeah, this is mystery yarn. <laughs> that was donated to my church group. So I burnt a strand of it, figured out it what smelled like hair when I did the burn test. So I decided it was wool. It knit up pretty nicely, but I did run it through the washing machine and it did Get a little bit felted not terribly I mean you can still pretty much see the stitches if my lighting was better but anyway it didn't completely felt so just maybe I'll try and attach a tag that says to hang dry for after washing but that's the man hat you can check it out in my project now here's the baby blanket that I need to wash again because my cat Cleo apparently loved my weaving. If you see my Instagram feed, yeah, she really loves it when I take out my little cricket loom. But this is two panels. I was going to have three, but unfortunately the three panel, the third panel, or was it was probably the first one that I wove, was significantly different from these two that I took notes on. So anyway, this is two panels. It's about 34 by 24. So I'm calling it a small baby blanket. My selvages are a little messy on this. Uh, but the, you know, uh, I think I like how it came out. So I'm going to hold it up for you now. See? You can kind of tell where I tried to do the invisible sewing for it, but I really like how it came out. I'm proud of it. I'm gonna give it a wash because, yes, Cleo loves my knit 
crochet and knitting and especially weaving a lot. So she was laying on it and then the cats laid on it. Uh, so yeah, that'll be washed again before I send it on its way to the church. That's supposed to be a baby blanket for baptisms or new babies, whatever. And this, now we're going on to the whips. This is a spinning whip. This is what I've been working on for quite some time. This is what I've been so impatiently working on. I kind of wish it would focus. Because I'm really proud of how well it turned out. It's very thin. And I'm hoping to make three ply sock yarn. I haven't even started the second ply yet. But I will. So it's really pretty colors. It's um, fiber optics. It's their pencil roving out of merino and nylon. So hoping for some socks out of this. God knows when I'm going to finish that. But at least I'm no longer scared of trying to spin as fine as even as possible. So speaking of spinning. I did use my blending board a few weeks ago when I first got it, and I made some really cute poonies out of purple. They got a little squished because shit happens, but, and of course I was playing with it so it got really long, but there's a little fire star and purple super wash wool or whatever so that's pretty true to color I really like how they came out so I'm hoping to make more interesting poonies or roll legs more appropriately they're called and spin those up eventually behind me you see my real my next spinning project. It's Shetland that I bought a long time ago. Some pretty tawny colored Shetland. That's my next spinning project. But I'll keep making those roll legs. And another work in progress. And this one I've worked about eight rows on since I last spoke to you. So, ooh, ooh, it's trying to commit project aside. That's the wrong side that I'm looking at. So you're looking at the last repeat of chart A, and that's on the larger needles. That's a cute owl stitch marker that you see. I'll give you a better look at that. As you know, I love my stitch markers. So there's a wide variety here. And I did get to work on that. So onward and upward. I've even managed to remember. Okay, so I cut myself off. So sorry about that. I, I was saying how I re managed to remember what my pattern repeats are. So that really helps move the progress along. Um, Let me give you... A picture oops crap yes here it is oh this is Boonets lovely design and here it is all done so it's really going to be lovely and hopefully it won't be too intimidating as I continue so anyway my other project is designed by Amy Gaines and they are these really cute mittens. They are crocheted and ooh, where did I put it? Where? Where? Crap. Oh there it is. Oh. So anyway. I'm adjusting them for my size. See? 
This is only the first one. I was just happy, really happy, inordinately happy that I actually had the yarn and stash. <laughs> Trying to be a good girl and not rely so heavily on the good old standby retail therapy. I try to keep saying I don't need retail therapy, which is a downright lie sometimes. <laughs> But anyway, and yes, I have been bringing this beautiful sweater by Hannah Fettig, the calligraphy cardigan. Been bringing it along because it's such a simple knit. Just increasing every other row for the arms. And that's out of Metal and Tosh. And that's a beautiful project. I get compliments everywhere about that yarn. It's like, I didn't spin it or nothing. Uh, so those are my three main works in progress. Of course, there's many more. But you know about those. Ooh. Excuse me. Ooh. Speaking of yarn, that is beautiful. Oh. And it's my metal touch, too. But this one is beautiful. It is, I don't know what it's called, 10k for MSF. So this is where 100% of the pro, uh, profits go to the Doctors Without Borders. And it's just a gorgeous color. And it's lightweight. It's a fingering weight yarn. It's got a beautiful picture of people that are in need. Who knows if they really are or just a model. So anyway. <laughs> there it is. That's my latest acquisition and hopefully my last for a little while. Who knows what I'll get in the meantime. <sighs> so... Other than the patch that I haven't touched since last month, <laughs> I did get new magazine in the mail. Now, this is the latest Simply Knitting, and it's got a myriad of attractive patterns. It's got one in particular that I've got to open my big old mouth about because it's just so damn funny. It's got some beautiful stockings. And other small gifts to make, like, let me see, this stocking, eh, try not to show the damn pattern, see that stocking is particularly lovely, but this is the pattern. <laughs> Some people love cats a lot, I know I do, but I don't love them enough. To have them clinging to my tit while I'm wearing a sweater. It's just a little bit overkill, simply knitting. <laughs> I just think it's fucking ridiculous and hilarious. And I love the person that came up with this. Who the heck designed this? Last minute Halloween knit. Yeah, sweater is a fucking last minute. Who the fuck knits that? Oh, it's 35, one of 35 funky designs from Novelty Knits by Giles and Sethard Brandreth. I massacred that name and I'm sorry. But this... <laughs> this just freaking cracked me up when I saw it too damn funny. It belongs in the ugly jumper. Add a fucking Santa hat to the cat. Ugly sweater. Guaranteed. But it does. Let me show you the other wonderful beautiful things before you think I'm an ass. Uh, there's some pretty slippers. See? Pretty slippers. Mer. <laughs> interesting articles and then there's something that 
I'd have to do cocaine to do this knit, because this looks like a lot of fiddly knitting. It's Ellen Dart's latest design for them, and it's gorgeous, but I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot knitting needle. It's this piece of beauty. Yeah, all the reindeer, all the little parts and antlers, and Santa, and the sled, and the reins. Yeah, y'all want it? Go for it. Not for me. I'm just not in the mood for that much fiddly knitting. But anyway, ooh, look at the socks they have. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure if that's Fair Isle or what. Colorful reversible socks, I'll say. But other than the titty cat, there's some small things to give. Really small toys to knit. Very unattractive kimono sweater. And all sorts of things. So, crisscross looks like a nice pair of fingerless mitts if you're into cables. So that's a really nice thing. You can make for a swap present or other things. But, yeah. Kitty titty sweater. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't care what you want to call it, but that's what that's going to be for me. Kitty titty sweater. <laughs> so anyway, what else have I been up to? Stuff and junk? Well, plenty. Um, other than moping about, I've been watching some new recaps of old horror movies. I watched the updated Carrie and the updated Halloween. And you want to know my opinion? One, one scheme for either of them. Both of them took away the feeling of the character and all that. Added some fucking special effects and just took the horror bits of it and made it that instead of scaring you. So, I was just thoroughly disappointed by the updated Carrie, and I was really disappointed by Halloween. The acting was dry, and a lot of the times I wished they would die already because there was just so much fucking screaming, and it just aggravated me and touched upon nerves that did not need to be touched upon. So, I was really disappointed in both remakes. Feel free to disagree with me if you want. I don't mind. To each his or her own. They were both a little bit sharper than the movies that they copied. But they had far less teeth. That's all I... Uh, I can say about them. So really disappointed. Go out and watch the ones from the 70s or early 80s if you must. But pass. <laughs> anyway, that's my movies review. And uh, other than that, I'm just trying to keep my head in my shoulders and my head out of my ass. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed my little show, and hope you come back. I want to thank everybody new and old who watched the show so very much. Thank you for sticking with me through good times and bad, and that'll be all for now. i leave you with my favorite parting thought, that if you are making crafts using your hands, to make the best Shetland shawl of the state fair or the silliest little toilet paper owl. You are, indeed, making the world a more beautiful place. And for that, I thank you. And I will hopefully make it to next week with a recording timely. I will be here next week. I just might not be in the mood to record. But you know that. <laughs> anyway, catch up with me on some of the many social media platforms, my favorite being 
Plurk, Instagram, and Facebook. So I will leave you with that information in the end credits. Thank you so much for watching me today, and I will talk to you next week.